I am now standing just outside the town of Cambrai in France at the Cambrai Tank Museum. Already at the start, I will tell you it's well worth a look if you are interested in this sort of thing. The exhibition starts with a roughly five minute movie that you can watch. It provides a quite nice context, but of course the most interesting things are further ahead. The museum is relatively tiny, but to see a World War I tank uh, in person was quite an impressive sight. So this will be a brief tour, but of course you can read quite many of the information plaques. There are also some items from World War One, actual items that have been collected by a, an association and donated to the museum. A model of the tank, which doesn't do justice to the real thing. There was also a really nice uh, set of short movies, about 10 minutes total, about four or five topics, including the Siegfried line. But of course, here is the beauty. Just before the climax, uh, here is a World War One uh, tanker's uh, helmet. As you can see, um, very humble beginnings. Here is what the tank uh, looked like. Very impressive sight, I must say. According to the information in the museum, it was manned by eight people. And of this particular tank, this is the only one that's preserved. Uh, where it's known that it took part in the Cambrai tank battle. It was manned by eight people and five of them died during the battle. Uh, here you can see quite extensive damage from our artillery. It was not described why the back is so bent, but I assume it also must be from the battle. Here you can see the openings where the, some of the crew would be using their handheld weapons shoot back. This is what I assume were also damage from our, our artillery. It would be absolutely terrifying to be inside the tank. I assume the steel that seems to be actually quite thin as you can see. Um, probably about seven eight millimeters thick. It probably would help protect it from the um, bullets of handheld weapons, but of course against our artillery it would have been no match, as you can see here. The tank is so extensively damaged that it's not even holding together without the assistance of some uh, supplements. The Cambrai tank battle is cited as important for two reasons. First, that it was up until that time the largest number of tanks involved in one battle, more than 400 on Allied side, but more importantly, it was the first example of combined arms where tanks, if supported by other parts of the military, could achieve great results. So a short video for uh, proportions, contrast. I am 197 centimeters, one meter 97 centimeters tall, and this tank positively dwarfs me. I think it's about at least two meters, 50 centimeters high. And if this thing would have been coming onto you in a trench, I would be absolutely terrified. There are also numerous smaller rooms in the museum, uh, which provide an overview of the tank corps and what happened uh, to the tanks after World War One. Uh, quite interesting how some ended uh, on the German side and were actually used against the Allied forces. Some were brought back to Britain, but most of them were used up during World War IV for scrap metal. Um, quite impressive, very interesting. About practicalities, here you can see the working hours. So be uh, sure to check them out before you come. It depends on the season. Entry tickets are very democratic. Uh, an adult pri ticket price is six euros. The premises are air conditioned, very present, and of course have the WC in case you need it. Okay, I've finished my tour of the Cambrai Tank Museum. As I said in the beginning, it, it's definitely worth a visit for any military history fan. Very unique exposition, very well thought out. Also nice modern design. And if you have come this far to the French countryside, then you should also pay respects to the uh, British fallen soldiers of World War I. Uh, most of them from the Cambrai battle. Uh, it's a very small cemetery 
uh, to the left of the museum and I'll uh, briefly go inside to also show you what it's like. This is only one of the many Allied and also German cemeteries scattered throughout France from both World Wars. This one is from World War I that has casualties from 1914 to 1918. Uh, in one of the mu movies in the museum it was mentioned that the casualties on both sides during the Cambrai, Cambrai battle were over 40,000 uh, soldiers. Um, I'm not sure about how many were dead, how many were injured, uh, but uh, definitely it must have been quite many that paid the ultimate price. And there in the distance you can also see the uh, memorial for the unknown soldier. So of course as it happens, quite many people were not identified or their remains were not really covered. So it's also to pay in tribute to them. But the association that manages this park, they are doing a very excellent job in keeping up this cemetery. And their aim is, as it was mentioned, to have a tombstone, headstone for every soldier to try to identify them. Uh, they uh, still are un uncovering 20, 30 uh, soldiers from World War I every year. Most of them cannot be identified, but those who are identified, they are also sometimes laid to rest here. And it's a very moving moment. Sometimes the families come over. Um, what can I say? Thank you for your service.